So as we saw previously, working with our straight lines, working with the vertically opposite angles, whatever that you had, you have a certain property that you need to understand. And from there, you can form equations from the statement that you understand. You form equations which you need to solve. It is also something that you must consider even working with your parallel lines. So in this case, we are given in this activity or this exercise to calculate the size of angle X. Given two lines which are parallel, which concept is it that you're going to use? And that concept is supposed to be true from the parallel lines. If these two lines are parallel, we do understand that these two angles that we have inside here are called co-interior angles, the ones that create a C like this. They are co-interior angles. And what is it about co-interior angles? They add up to 180 degrees. So that alone is formulating an equation. 3x plus the angle of 2x they are supposed to add up to 180 de de uh, degrees. They are supplementary angles. Two angles which add up, these are co-interior. That's the relationship you're talking about, the co-interior angles. Remember your angles from the introduction that we had. So these are co-interior angles. They sum up to 180, they add up to 180. So you formed an equation. Remember your equations. Now you can solve for x. Let's add uh, that's 5x is equal to 180 degrees. What is affecting our x? The product multiplication divide. All right. So we divide by the number that is affecting x. That is going to give us uh, the exact value of x in this case, which is going to be uh, 36 degrees. If you divide 180 divided by 5, that's 36 degrees. So that's it. So you form an equation. You solve it according to what you're given. Question number five is given. We need to calculate X and we can see that we've got parallel lines and there, this time we are creating a Z. Alternate angles. What is it about the alternate angles? We do understand that alternate angles are equal. So meaning to say the equation that we are going to be forming is from alternate angles that they are equal. If this is 124, this is also supposed to be 124. They are equal. So that is an equation that we have formed. So you can solve for x. Divide by 3, divide by 3, we have got uh, the value of x. And that was uh, going to be, if we divide, uh, that is 3x. And this is 124. Uh, 124 divided by 3 was going to be decimal there. That is something that is endless. So this was just supposed to be... Because there it's going to be something else, guys, 41, 333, 3, 3, and so on. So actually, this was supposed to be like a 2x that you're given, say, uh, 2x. So if you have 2x is equal to 124, something that you can work with, you divide by 2 by 2. So there, x will give us something like uh, 62 degrees, okay? So if you're using the 3, uh, that one, that is there, it's fine. But uh, that was supposed to be something that is exact not something that will give us a decimal like that. But the concept is that these two angles, they are equal. And if they are equal, you just equate those angles, all right? That is alternate angles. So that is it, guys, for this one. Then on number six, we have got uh, the parallel lines again. And there, what are we forming? That's the F, okay? So there we are talking of the corresponding angles. Remember, corresponding one is inside, one is outside. And what is it about corresponding angles? They are equal. So 3x minus 10 is equal to x plus 50 degrees. These are corresponding angles. You are referring uh, to the corresponding angles being what? Uh, being equal. So we have formed an equation from that statement alone, and we have to solve the equation now. So take the x values on their own, then the angles on their own. So that means this x on this other hand will be a minus. Remember, it crossed the equal sign. It changes the sign. is equal to 50 already on the right-hand side. Then we transpose the negative 10 on this other side. It will be a plus 10 degrees. All right. So this is same as we've got 1x there. So let's subtract 3 minus 1. That is 2x 
is equal to 50 plus 10, which is 60 degrees. So just divide by 2 by 2. That's obtaining the value of x, which was going to be uh, 30 degrees if you divide uh, properly there by 2. So that's it. You form an equation, then you have to solve that. All right. On the other hand, question number 7, calculate the sizes of angle A and also angle C, E, P. All right. Let's start with the angle A first, which is the unknown. There we have got power lines and we are creating a Z. Remember, that's also a stretch Z that we are seeing. And we do know that alternate angles, the ones which create a Z, they are equal. So 5A plus 40 degrees is equal to A plus 100 degrees. There we are talking of what? The alternate angles. Remember, alternate angles are equal. So this angle and this angle, they are equal, the ones which form a Z. So they are equal. If it formed an equation, just like the previous case, so for A, you're going to transpose the A, this other side, take the minus 40, uh, the 40, this side, it becomes a minus there. So meaning to say we've got 5A, this A crosses the equal sign, jumps the equal sign there, becomes a negative. So that's minus A is equal to 100 which is already on the right-hand side, take the 40 this side, it becomes a minus. So that's minus 40 there. All right. So let's subtract. Uh, this is 5A minus 1. This is 1A. 5 minus 1, which is 4A is equal to 100 uh, minus 40, which is going to be 60. All right. So that was going to be 60 degrees. Then we divide by 4. That's a product. You are multiplying. So you divide by the number that is uh, multiplying in that case. So as you can see, these are just your normal equations that you're supposed to revise, revise your equations. So A was going to give us uh, 15 degrees. So let us revise our equations, our normal algebraic equation, because it is just from those equations. But now you're solving like the angles, still one of the same thing. All right, then CEP. That is from C to E to P, this angle that is formed here. So in order for us to have this angle C, E, P, let's just substitute first the A that we calculated here. Remember, A is equal to 15 degrees. So you're going to substitute 5 into 15 uh, plus 40 degrees. Then we see what are we going to have. 5 times uh, 15 is something like 75. Then we add... 40 them, which is going to give us 115 degrees. So this whole angle is 115 degrees. So what is the relationship with the angle that you want to calculate, which is C, E, P? The relationship is that these two angles, they are on a straight line. And we do understand that angles on a straight line add up to 180. So we are simply going to subtract from 180. So angle C, E, P, the one that we want to calculate there, is simply going to be 180 degrees minus this other one that we are given because these two angles are supposed to add up to 180 degrees. So subtracting this from 180 degrees was going to give us an angle of uh, 65 degrees. So that is our angle C, E, P. This one was going to be 180, uh, it's going to be 65. So that if you add these two angles, you must obtain uh, 180 degrees. So these are the typical questions that you might be given uh, on the parallel lines, working with the geometry of straight lines. Together with the parallel lines, you need to understand the basics of each, the alternate, the corresponding, uh, talk of the vertically opposite angles. You need to understand each and every part of the parallel lines. So that's what we had uh, from these questions. We shall have more from MedZone African Motives till we meet again.